Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Behind the Cast by Real Sportswear. I'm your host, Andrew Foster, and we're bringing in-depth interviews, fishing tips, and much more from our brand ambassadors. Before we get started, I wanted to tell you about the Real Sportswear app. With the latest products and a quicker shopping experience, the Real Sportswear app is your destination for everything Real Sportswear. Not only that, when you shop the app, you receive free shipping on every order. Plus, we drop the newest gear right there for you first. Download the app today on Android and iOS devices. Thank you so much for joining us. We have an exciting episode ahead. Our guest today is charismatic redfish master, fishing guide, tournament angler, entrepreneur, chef, and so much more. He also makes one hell of a margarita, Captain Alan White. How you been, Alan? I've been well, Andrew. Thank you for the nice introduction there. Captain Alan White is a seasoned fishing guide, tournament angler. He is one of the original brand ambassadors for Real Sportswear and has been with us roughly six years. He's played a pivotal role and provided Real Sportswear with insight on product creation, testing, and many hours on the water. Um, let's see, Alan. So you've recently took third at the Saltwater Angler Redfish Series Tournament. Yes, I did. You want to tell us a little bit about that? It was a good experience. That is a very challenging tournament. It's a lot of strategy involved in it, but it's a very good tournament format. Real honest tournament. I really like it. Good payout. Who were you fishing with? I was fishing with a friend of mine named Kevin Bertram, a guy I used to bait fish with years ago. He was a former guide several years ago with me. Very cool. Um, and y'all have actually done pretty good here in the Saltwater Angler Series, yeah? Yeah, so this year we've taken a sixth place with the first tournament, and we managed the third place for the second tournament we were in. Awesome. And it's just redfish, right? Just redfish. It's a five redfish over a two-day tournament. Um, all right, so let's see. The whole point of Behind the Cast is to get to, uh, get to know you guys a little more. As brand ambassadors, y'all are kind of the face and the spokespeople of Real Sportswear, so I thought it'd be cool to do these little interviews where we get to know a little bit more about you, where you come from, what you like to do, you know, more than just fishing. So let's get to know you a little bit better. Uh, you lived in Flower Bluff for quite a while now. Uh, I know you got a sweet operation. Uh, listeners, as he's talking to me here, he's sitting on his deck. I believe it is called the Cantina. What, you, what is it called again, Al? Oh, it's cantina. just a Cantina sign with Padre Allen underneath it. It's just the party porch is what it is. There it is, the party porch. So you lived in Flower Bluff for a while, but where were you really born and raised? So I was, I'm from Northeast Missouri. I was, I was uh, brought up in the Midwest. I uh, did a lot of time on the Mississippi River as a youngin. But yeah, I brought up in the Midwest and I'm from Northeast Missouri. Awesome, man. I'm not from, I'm not from Texas, but I got here as quick as I could. <laughs> well, what brought you to Texas? Uh, I really uh, enjoyed the music scene in Austin. And so I moved to Austin and spent about 15 years there during the golden days of Austin. Really enjoyed it. Met a lot of people, had a lot of fun and uh, did a lot of fishing up there. But I got my taste for the salt water as I was living in Texas. And the time came, it was just time to move and get closer to that salt water. I really enjoy the salt water fishing and enough that, you know, I just wanted to move here. Yeah, what what year did you move down? I moved uh, to Corpus Fire Bluff in 2000. Wow. Shoot, yeah. I think I was still in high school. <laughs> right on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, who put a rod in your hand for the first time? That would be my father. Uh, my father, I remember him giving me a Zebco push button reel, and he would turn me loose in the backyard. With It had a spoon with no hook on it. And so he would turn me loose in the backyard to practice casting. Oh, wow. And that was my first introduction to fishing. And he was also the first person that took me out fishing. I remember going out bass fishing with him on a, on a little stock tank in a rowboat and just catching some really big bass. And actually, I still have the picture of that, those bass in, from my grandparents' house. Really? Wow. Yeah. I know. I, I think a lot of people get their first, uh, well, I mean, I guess unless you grow up on the coast, you kind of get your first experience with bass uh, or freshwater fishing anyway. So. That's really cool, man. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your guide business? Well, uh, I started Corpus Christi Bay Charters about 15 years ago. I've been doing it for 15 years now. I operate out of my house here in Flower Bluff. It's like my own little private marina. It's pretty handy. Um, I like to, I like to catch redfish. I must say that. So I kind of specialize in catching redfish on light tackle. Whether it be lures or live bait, either one. Uh, I just really enjoy putting customers on big redfish it just kind of makes their day and the young ones it makes memories for a lifetime it really does oh yeah 
Oh, I mean, shoot, we've we've gone fishing together. Uh, just, I mean, one random morning we'll go out just right around the corner and and drift for a little bit, and uh, yeah, we've caught our fair share together. That's for sure. Yes, sir. It doesn't take much. You they're, always they're catch more there. than I do. <laughs> After all, I am a professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right, so you target uh, redfish. Um, you also do trout fishing, though, don't you? I do. I catch. We catch a lot of trout when you're targeting redfish. They hang out in the same areas and they eat the same thing. So it's a matter of just coming across them, and you you can catch those. You can catch black drum, and even a few flounder doing the same thing. But you yeah. know, it's just the the tug is the drug, as they say. You know, that redfish tug is a heavy, heavy drug. It's hard to get away from. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's, uh, that's what got, you know, I got, got me hooked on it was, uh, was freelining mullet and catching them big redfish. Uh, yeah. There's just nothing like it, you know, smack the heck out of it. All right. Um, all right. Well, tell us something that people don't know about you. Like what else are you into? Well, fishing was always my big hobby, but now it's my profession, but I do enjoy cooking. So I do a lot of cooking and I really enjoy that cooking at home for the wife and whatever and do it for friends. It's nice to help friends out with their cooking too, you know, teach them how to cook a proper steak, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a lot of simple things, but it's, you know, stuff you have to apply. Sure. And I, uh, actually, I know this already. We did an awesome little series. I think it was a couple minutes long. Um, today's catch. And, uh, what were we cooking on that again? That's a good question. Um, it was, Trout pinwheels, I believe. Um, we made a strawberry margarita to start the to start the episode. I remember ah. that. And yes. I want to say bacon wrapped asparagus were also on the menu. And there was something else. Like was it bacon wrapped redfish, or was that the other episode that never made it to cut? I think that was the other episode. But we there was yeah, one. We the there was one stuff. more thing. There was, yep, the, the, the trout pinwheels with crab stuffing and a cream sauce was the entree. Yes. Oh, and then. Uh, Javi did Javi the see um, yes yes <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <C. laughs> wow well, yes Javi did ceviche <laughs> um, uh, where did you learn how to cook all that stuff man so uh, for my grandmother of course and my mother like most people you pick it up hanging around the kitchen with them um, I remember my grandmother was always a big contributor to the church cookbook we always had a church cookbook in our house. And she was a big contributor and she was an excellent cook, made very good pies and, and whatever. But yes, my grandma really got me started on it. That's very cool. Yeah, man. All right. Well, moving right along. So you're a professional fishing guide and a cook. But our uh, question I want to ask, or I guess I want our listeners to know is whether you're superstitious or not. With my fishing, if I'm, I'm superstitious, not as much as I used to be. I do believe in omens. Sometimes you have good omens as you leave. Sometimes you have bad omens as you leave. But I've been fishing long enough that the superstition thing, I've seen enough of it proven wrong that I'm not truly superstitious. Like the whole banana on a boat thing, you know, of course, everybody has that one. And, yeah, you know, I've had bananas on the boat in the past couple of weeks and it didn't affect the fishing. It wasn't my banana, but I found out about it later. We had bananas. Didn't affect the fishing one day. <laughs> But as a rule, you don't take bananas. No, on, I'm, I'm on not board. a big banana person. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for preference. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> well, no, preference and there's a little superstition there. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite fishing cap? I mean, is there one that you've... I will. I go in cycles with them. Of course, I can't wear one forever because they wear out and get faded and they start smelling really bad. So I do I'll try to sure. keep the same type of cap for as long as I can, believe it or not. Heck Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what uh, do you have a cap? Like if we were going to fish a big tournament, got to catch a couple redfish. I mean, no entry fee, but you're going to win, you know, I don't know, hundred grand. Which, which cap are you going to grab? My lucky cap. It's going to be the, the limit out cap. Hell yeah. It's been doing me. It's been doing me right recently. Red, the real limit out cap has been really doing me well recently. That gray one, right? Yeah, that gray one. It's looking pretty ragged right about now. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe I wore it for all the, for both of the saltwater angler tournaments, actually. There you go. I believe See? I was wearing that cap. See you, ladies and gentlemen. Wear some real sportswear. Catch more fish. That's right. I don't know if I can actually say that. Isn't that a uh, uh, – whose brand is that? Catch more fish. How about just real sportswear, catch fish? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that works. Um, all right. What's your favorite fishing memory? 
I have so many. That's a good question. I mean, everything from catching marlin in Cabo San Lucas, you know, to being on school, giant schools of redfish and just hauling them in one after another with customers and having children, you know, putting them on their first redfish, whether it be a five or seven or eight year old, making a memory that, you know, is going to last them a lifetime. They catch a big 25, 28 inch red and they're never going to forget that. But I think my favorite is probably not even a fishing memory, but a boating memory, which mm -hmm. I remember my grandfather putting me on his lap on the Mississippi River and letting me drive his boat as we went up the river when I was probably five years old. And that's that's one that has really stuck with me. <clears throat> that's a good memory. And part of uh, the fishing memories that, you know, you and I both have, uh, everybody really that's, that spends any time on the water, you always got that, the, that one funny memory, something happened and, uh, you know, keeps you cracking up. Do you have a particular funny memory you'd like to share with us? I have several of them, but I have one that happened recently on the tournament we were talking about, actually. Okay. The second second part of that tournament, um, I had a brand new reel on, of course, and I'm fishing what I call the devil rig, and it requires a little pop every once in a while, so you're popping it and letting the jig fall, popping it the jig fall, and I'm fishing along with that, and uh, I go to pop it, and a big redfish hits it, and the rod just goes flying right out of my hand into the water. First time it's ever happened to me. <laughs> and so I could look down, and it's on clear water about a foot and a half, two feet deep, and I could see the rod moving through the grass uh -huh. as I'm drifting along, and I'm trying to net it with the net. And my partner is just cracking up at me, of course. And finally, about the third scoop, I get the handle of the reel and get it up to the top and grab, get a hold of the rod and land the redfish. Wow. But yeah, that's the only <laughs> time that's happened and it was during tournament play. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually had a, a similar story up in uh, the hill country. I had a, uh, a rod with like worms or something on the bottom, you know, uh, and I was trying to catch these big old catfish that were uh, like schooling down there. And uh, anyway, I wasn't paying attention and it went, you know, gone. Yep. And uh, anyway, my father-in-law, we could see it down in, the, you know, it was probably, I don't know, eight feet deep, 10 feet deep, but it was crystal clear water. And uh, yeah, we went out there on the canoe and got the other reel, <laughs> you know, hooked up to it and the dang daggum catfish was on there. Yes, so. sir. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's cool, man. So you got the, you know, that was the third place finish? That was the third place finish. We didn't weigh in that fish. That fish was, uh, we kicked it. It was only a 23-inch fish, so we that fish went back. But, yeah, yeah. I, at least I got the rod and reel back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So I've got, in, with the Behind the Cast series here, I want to ask you guys a couple of serious questions, okay? All right. So the first one here is someone gives you an elephant. You can't sell it or give it away. What do you do with it? Hmm. I'd say make elephant stew. <laughs> You'd eat it? <laughs> I'd say make elephant stew. It's enough to feed a village. And if you run short, you can, you know, you can always add a rabbit if you need a hair more. <laughs> okay. That's an interesting <laughs> answer. How many pennies would fit in your tackle box? A plethora of pennies would fit in my tackle box. You, would you like the amount of pennies or the dollar amount of pennies? You can give me the dollar amount. That would be 55 50 exactly 55 dollars and 50 cents exactly huh okay well maybe on a follow-up we'll go uh we'll go measure it go over there and try it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where we're gonna get all the pennies but i've got them already <laughs> <laughs> the spare change <laughs> yeah my spare change bo bottle i have them <laughs> okay and the last serious question is design a spice rack for the blind okay that's a good one. I've never heard a question like that. <laughs> I would have to put uh, three racks in it with the spices and on in Braille underneath each spice and on the bottle would have to be the name of the spice in Braille. There you go. You heard it here, folks. All right. So that's the end of this, the serious question <laughs> segment. <laughs> a couple of curveballs, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did have one. I've got, a, I got a couple of doozies. And if you ever think of any funny questions to uh, Ask the other guys. I mean, by all means, send them your send them my way. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else going on right now? Nope. That's about it. Uh, just uh, fishing. That's all I'm doing right now. Doing some serious fishing. Yeah, actually, I've heard that you guys are really busy right now. Everyone in the county is busy right now. Everybody I've talked to is just bowed up. 
Um, of course, we have Labor Day coming up. Things are probably going to slow down a little bit for all of us. Mm -hmm. Hunting season, that kind of stuff. But right now, everybody is just bowed up. Yeah, right on. And it's a good, it's a good thing. You know, get outdoors, get some sunshine, get some fresh air. Heck yeah, man. Uh, so where can we find you, follow you? You know, how do we keep up with the Redfish Master? Well, the name of the business is Corpus Christi Bay Charters. Uh, I have a website, CorpusChristiBayCharters.com. I'm on Facebook at Corpus Christi Bay Charters and Instagram at uh, C-A-P-T-A-L-P-O, Captain Alpo on Instagram. Awesome, man. Okay, guys, I appreciate you uh, listening in to the first episode of Behind the Cast. I wanted to mention before we wrap it up that the new Solar Bandits have landed, UPF 50 rated, to offer protection from the sun's harmful rays and damaging UV rays. Wear it to protect your face, head, neck, and ears from direct exposure to the sun. We've added an additional style to the Solar Bandit, which includes a laser cut breathing holes and a new contoured fit for all day comfort. They retail for 25 bucks and are available at realsportswear.com, the Real Sportswear app, and your closest Real Sportswear dealer. Alan, I appreciate you coming on, buddy. Thanks for having me, Andrew. I really enjoyed it. We're, we need to do another cooking show very soon. Yes, I agree. And uh, folks, go over to uh, CorpusChristiBayCharters.com if you're interested in taking the trip. Uh, follow them on Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, man, we'll have to get together for sure. You betcha, man. I look forward to it. You got it, buddy. We'll talk to you soon, Alan. Thanks again. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much for tuning in to Behind the Cast. Check in next week for another in-depth interview. Make sure you follow Real Sportswear on Instagram, Facebook, and we'll see you guys on the water.